Funky Podcast. Uh. The Funky Podcast. Uh. The Funky Podcast. Uh. We're doing a podcast. Oh my God. We're doing a podcast. <laughs> what are we going to talk about? <laughs> the Funky Podcast. <laughs> the Funky Podcast. 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 Welcome to the Funky Podcast. My name is Kieran. And I am Sean. And today we are going to do a podcast on something. What is that something, Sean? Well, that something is, as a matter of fact, tea. Now you might be thinking at home, what what do you mean? The letter tea? A, A golfing tea? No. The drink tea. Yes, the drink the drink tea. that you tea. the thing that you put into your mouth and then it goes through your body and you and you turn it to piss you turn it into a lot of piss mm. inside the toilet bowl you're taking so, the piss a bit there i think but okay. oh yeah definitely yeah we're hilarious okay so um to start it off, Sean, uh, can you tell me the story of your first cup of tea? Now, it's been a very long time since my first cup of tea, and I don't quite remember the very first time. I do remember I started drinking, I believe, when I was four years old, though. Four uh, years old? Four years wow. old, I think. Yeah. I mean, probably wasn't like a regular thing, like I, but like, yeah, I think like I first had tea when I was four. And um, I think I liked it a lot because I continue drinking it to this day. So, you know, either I like it a lot or I have, like, bad Stockholm Syndrome problem, which, you know, wh- whichever one is more likely. Yeah. Um, I must have been about seven, eight, or about nine. I'm not sure. I think mm. I was, like, s- maybe eight. Um, I remember my dad used to have it in the morning. And then I was like, I kind of want to try it. And, uh, you know, he made sure that it was loads of milk in it, maybe sugar. And away it goes. And it was kind of an imag- a magical experience. Um, i kind of been drinking it every day since then. And, yeah, no, it, it's just something, you know, a lot of Irish people say that you relax more when you have a cup of tea to drink. Do you agree with this? I do, actually. Yeah, I do very much agree with it. Um, You know, it gives you, like, some energy, but it doesn't, like... It's not, like, too much caffeine. Like, you're not, like, freaking out when you have it. Like, I don't know, like, if you had, like, like a whole kind of, like, monster or something. But no, um, yeah, no, I think that's a very accurate uh, saying. Yeah, you do relax more, I think. Yeah, no, it's, like, cup of tea solves all your problems mm. like it doesn't solve all your problems yeah but like you know it's a great kind of if you have depression it won't but you know like it, it's still nice to have yeah it's definitely a very very a good thing having tea and dabbing of course of course is a, a great combination but um yeah no that it was actually my father who actually gave me my first cup of tea who actually gave you your first if you can remember Oh, it would have to be my mother, I think. Okay, yeah. Is your family big tea drinkers? Totally, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's his really, really fantastic. Mm. Um, the next question I want to ask you is a really, really controversial one, and it's very, very, like, in media, like, blown mm. up. Uh, probably a hundred times more than anything going on in the news today. Uh Um, And it's a big kind of controversial which side are you on sort of thing. And it's that of Barry's or Lions. 
Well, okay. Um, I'm about to open myself up to a lot of criticism here. I'm sure this may alter the way you think about me, but hand on my heart, I, I swear to tell the truth, I am a Barry's boy. You're a Barry's boy. I am a Barry's boy. Okay, fair enough. You know, I, I'm I'm kind of conflicted because uh, I enjoy both. I think both are quite nice. Um, you know, and it doesn't really. I don't know, sometimes they, they do have different tastes. I've recognized that. It's kind of uh, common knowledge. But, you know, I'm I'm not really, you know, one to fight. I feel like with, it's kind of like DC or Marvel for me. I enjoy both. And I just don't want to see them both fight. Mm. So I think lions and berries can handshake and uh, just be glad that they're there. Uh, to make the art of uh, a beautiful cup of tea. I agree. I think that's a very inspirational uh, thought to have. I mm-hmm. hope I hope your vision of this future is one that uh, we will soon see come to life. They honestly should make an animated movie about Barry's tea versus Lion's tea and the they origin should. of tea. The origin of tea, yeah. yeah. I, I think it would be an Oscar worthy movie. Yeah, and they'd have to like of course have uh, cameos from Ice T and uh, Mr. T. And uh, the lion from uh, Narnia as well. Of course, yeah. Play and the band Aslan as well backing him up. Oh absolutely, yeah. No it'll be the uh, next Chippendale. <laughs> oh um, all the cameos. Yeah. And uh, also the band Lion, um because they do the Transformers oh, song. Yeah. So yeah. Um Lions uh, as Lion, um, you can have Liam Neeson, his, mm-hmm. you know, as Lion. And for Barry's, I suppose, either... Uh, who would you cast as Barry? Who would I cast as Barry? Yeah, as um, Barry's T. That may, maybe just because like, he's in a show called Barry, but I mean, Bill Hader does come to mind. Oh, yeah. No, that, that's his great choice. Unless they want to like actually get someone named Barry. No, to I, I, him. no I don't think so. There's already an Irish Barry, and he's been in and off so far <laughs> in his career. Maybe I'm just jealous, but I don't know. Mm. Um, next controversial question is sugar or no sugar? I am um, a no sugar <coughs> I am no sugar Sean. <laughs> no sugar Sean. Perfect. Yeah, sugar is always like... Yeah, you're sweet enough. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sweet enough. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of conflicted in between the two. Mm. It's like sometimes I'd feel like it, sometimes not. But sometimes it is quite nice. Mm. Um, But there are times where I just don't feel up to having... Uh, you know, sugar in my tea, but sometimes I do have sugar in my tea. You know, it's just, you know, um, conflict in between the two, but it's okay. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of, I'm easy going with the tea. I'm just not really like a specific taste, just as long as it's not a different type of uh, tea than the regular one. Like I do enjoy green tea, if you have green tea. Um, been drinking green tea all goddamn day, as <laughs> Rico Brown would say. Um, but I do enjoy that. Never put milk in green tea. It's a bit silly. I um I did that once by accident. Yeah, it probably tasted not very yeah, nice. Yeah, no, it was um the way I went was like, I was at school in the kitchen of my school, and they have like a box full of tea bags, and um, somebody must have put like a green tea tea bag in with the rest of them, and I didn't notice, and like. As I put out, like, the one I picked out happened to be that one. Um, and then I put it, like, actually, like, in the... Um, and I think, like, I, I know it looked a bit different, but I just kind of thought, like, yeah, it's it, it just, like, it's probably just a bit misshapen or whatever. Uh, but I put it in there, and I put the hot water in, and I noticed it was, like, kind of greenish. And again, like, I was kind of... And I was kind of thinking, like, oh, wait. And I think it smelled a bit different, and I was just... I realized I had made... I may have made a mistake, but um, I decided to just, like, go ahead anyway and, like... <laughs> I put some milk in, <laughs> and um, I could notice at that point it was green, so I was like, okay, I've I've made a very big mistake here, but, like, since I'd gone so far, I went to, um, I went the whole way, and I just, like, I actually took a sip of it, and um, it tasted like someone had gone right up into my mouth and vomited into it, so. Yeah, craptastic. 
I would I I I I I give I give green tea with milk a two out of ten. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, one point because it was in a mug, and the other point because it was mm. stable. Yeah, it um it it moisturized my mouth, so yeah, I can course. that that's the best thing I can yeah. say about it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, um, yeah, different types of tea. Like, some I haven't tried, but some I just don't want to bother. You know what I mean? I'm just not bothered to try every bit because, you know, just a regular tea is fine. Yeah. Um, what's your thought on the other uh, kind of villain of it, uh, which is known as coffee? Um, I, I, I mean, I've tried coffee. It's a bit too bitter for me. Yeah, and like I like sense. some coffees, but it's like I like like the fancier ones that have like cream and stuff on them. Mm-hmm. At which point, like yeah. it's just like the actual coffee taste is being drowned out by all the other stuff. So yes. I don't even yeah. know. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure some of the gatekeepers in the community would say that's not real coffee, but uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it, that that makes perfect sense. Um, mm. I'm not really a big fan of coffee, just in my own humble opinion. Um. I mean, sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it actually works for myself. Mm. But for the most part, I don't tend to drink coffee because it's not really my kind of thing. And, um, Mm. you know, sometimes it's fine and sometimes it works. But most of the time, not really. I don't mind a cappuccino, though. I'll have a cappuccino every now and then. But mostly, you know, there's something about that taste. It's a bit bitter, you know what I mean? Mm. But... Tea has almost like a welcome, heartwarming sensibility about it. It's like you're drinking a hug. That's exactly what it feels like you're drinking. Coffee, it tastes like you're drinking some liquidized garbage. Um, It's like what they drink on the dark side for some reason. I don't know. It just has that sort of bitter, sort of uneasy feeling. But... You know, like really, really dark tea can have that as well. If you drink it black, yeah. But like you leave it there, it will get very bitter if you leave the tea bag in for too long, and sometimes it can drown out that perfect balance. But sometimes, you know, you can be very lucky and have a certain balance in it that can really satisfy you and help you work better or even wake you up a little bit and give you a soft tasting sensation in your mouth so yeah yeah um kind of a tangent but like you saying like it's what uh it's what they drink on the dark side now i just have an image in my head of palpatine going down making his morning coffee and just saying brew it yes. and, uh, and that and that and that gives me the um the funnies yeah um, um laugh audience yeah i'm laughing inside oh no did you hear what he said <laughs> yeah. no they love it oh. I love it so yeah. they love you Sean. they really do they love your comedy more than i love myself yes um another thing i want to ask and that is Americans. Now, I love Americans. I love, I don't know, I was about to name someone Canadian. That mightn't be the best choice. I mean, same continent. I guess. But um, I'm trying to think of uh, Elizabeth Olsen. She's American. Uh, yeah, that's that's a good American. Um, I, I was about to say Trump, but I wouldn't say that. Um, Hillary Clinton, maybe I don't know. Nah, uh, uh, Barack Obama. Uh, yeah, he's a pretty, pretty, pretty pog American. He seems nice. Yeah, D- Denzel. Ah, uh, Denzel. Yeah, Washington. Um, so American, like he has a state in his name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Emma Stone. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good American. Yeah. We gotta someday. We gotta make a tier list of like every American. Yeah, 
all all 500 million of them or whatever yeah and uh chris duckman john flickster totally. uh, doug walker you know all the like there's a lot of fantastic american people who've done a lot for society yeah. and have given not just great entertainment but also a lot of smart sensibilities that aren't tiktok um people who do twerks in the camera or keyboard warriors that are roamed to their attic. Now, I'm not saying there isn't people from other countries who do that too. Of course, there are. Sorry. That wasn't a tea bag, by the way. Um, that was my soul. Um, His soul is crumbling. But there's one thing about Americans that I don't get. And what would that be? Well, that would be the idea of the invisible kettle. Yeah, this is a real phenomenon I'm only just now waking up to. Um, the Americans do not seem to use a kettle, and I'm gonna like I'm gonna like have to have a sit down with like all five hundred million of you right now, who I'm sure are all watching this, and I gotta say, it's a little bit cringe. But one thing that really drives me insane, on social media, there has been ways that Americans have shown how to make a cup of tea. And Meow. what they do is they put it in the microwave. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Guys, clap. Clap. No, 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 no. no. Don't, no, don't laugh. Okay. okay. You okay? Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, they were there for you. Um, Shut up. So, yeah, Americans, what, what are your thoughts on Americans, the way they make this sort of thing? I mean, I just, I, I mean, microwaving it, like, like, when you say microwaving it, do they literally just, like... Yeah, they put it in the microwave, it's like, they so put, they, they put water in it first, right, and yeah. there's a tea bag. And is and it cold it, water? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Jesus Christ. And then they put it in the microwave to heat it up. As far as I know. Or, like, they put it in, like, a stove or something, or a pot, I don't know. I'm yeah. not sure, because, like... There was one that showed a microwave and then there was like some people that heated up or something. But I don't know. It's just such a... um. Just boil a kettle. like They like, don't have a kettle. Get kettles. Get kettles. Get, get, get kettles. If you have to order it online from the UK, do it. Yeah. Or visit Ireland. They're in it's, Tesco. They're cheap. <laughs> it's it's worth it. I'm, I'm telling you, it's worth it. Yes. Or at least get a boiler. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I don't Just know. Don't microwave it. I mean, don't well, microwave. I've never technically had microwave tea, so I can't say for sure if it's bad. But I no, mean, I've I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on instinct and say it is. Yeah, I haven't had it, but it just sounds like piss. Like it mm. really does. Like the the actual hypocrisy of it, how proud they are of making it this way, kind of gives me uh, shivers and me tivers. <laughs> It re yeah, it really, it really, it really does give me the zoinks mm. and the yikes. Now, I will say, I feel like smart Americans are smart enough. Like, I feel like Denzel is so smart that he mm. probably does drink regular tea from somewhere regular. Like, yeah. there was that clip in um, that film, I think it was called The Equalizer. Have you seen that film? I actually have. Yeah. Um, there's a scene where he's in uh, a cafe, I think, and he has, like, a tea bag in, like, a tissue in, like, his, um, his inside pocket or whatever, and he puts it into a cup of some sort of water. I'm pretty sure it's hot water. I hope it is. Mm. But uh, I'm sure that he keeps coming back to that place because they probably have proper water in there so at least he's uh, given an attempt to actually drink tea properly you know what i mean do it the right way yeah and uh, denzel's a very smart man and very well spoken so i feel yeah. like he does um 
you know, obviously he's American, but I, I'm pretty sure he's one of the smart ones that drinks tea the proper way. Yeah. You know what I mean? One of the good ones. <laughs> yeah, one of the good ones. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Don't take uh, that out of context. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure one of those Jenners or the Kardashians or, uh, you know, those people, I, I don't think they um, drink tea the right way. I'm pretty sure they drink. They're, they're probably, they're probably like coffee heads, all those. Oh, uh, of course. Pithy coffee he coffee yeah. heads. Oh my goodness. Yeah, definitely. Um, One more uh, thing I want to talk about, um, just very, very quickly, is how to make the perfect cup of tea First up is. Do you want to go first or will I? Uh, I'll go first. Okay. Um, I think the perfect way to make a cup of tea is you get the tea bag and you just you just eat it. But no, um, oh. the perfect way to make a cup of tea is to oh, um, I think yeah, put the tea bag in the cup. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, put the tea bag in the cup. Then, uh, you know, get some freshly boiled water, pour that in, um, stir it around a little bit. I try, I typically try to um, press the tea bag up against the side of the cup, you know, squeeze out all the flavor. Um, then after that, put the milk in, and after that, give it another stir, like blend it all in, and uh, voila, a simply made perfect cup of tea, I think. Yeah. And you make sure that the tea bag is out of the cup after yes. you're finished. Yes, uh, you make sure that's out of the cup, um, not even like before not even like before it's finished i mean it's like before i even put the milk in oh you you take it out before you put the milk in yeah i do that another controversial issue i'm sure our audience seems to enjoy that yeah they know they know what's right yeah um so here's how i do it mm -hmm. i boil the kettle and it goes And eventually it boils. And I grab a tea bag, I put it in the cup, and then fill up the cup. And I actually put the milk in first before I actually take out the tea bag and make sure the flavour is uh, mixed in with the milk. Oh, come on, guys. Come on. You haven't tried it. You haven't tried it. At least give him a chance to, like, say a piece. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, John. They really love you. Um, yeah, no, it's, um, I don't know. It's just, it's like a mixture. It's like you have to keep a balance. You know what I mean? It's like you have to mix it in um, to really have that full flavor sort of thing. And that's what I do. That's how I make it. Um, I mean, you can take out the tea bag and stuff like that, but sometimes there's like more taste, and sometimes it kind of mixes in really well. And then when you take out the bag with milk in it, you know, it's just sometimes it's fine. And uh, just as long as it's stirred right, and as long as it's kind of made. With a, that kind of balanced taste. I like it this way. I enjoy it. Uh, I think that's very... I think... You know, I may not personally agree, but I definitely... I will say I think it's great that you have a platform to speak on this. Well, I am very pro-free speech. Um, okay. If free speech did not exist, I would, I would be a bit bummed. Yeah, I don't know. I just... Sometimes I have to have the whole taste, I guess. Mm. But, um, yeah. Anyway, we can... We're all friends at the end of the day. Yeah. So we mentioned kettles earlier as well. So this is kind of a related thing. Again, maybe alienating to our American viewers. But, you know, to that I say, like, that's on you for not having kettles. Yeah. What do you think of tea cozies? Um, can you explain the term? A tea cozy is like... It's like a little, um... Hmm. Accessory, I guess, that you put like on top of a uh, on top of a kettle, just for uh, just for like visual appearances. Oh, it's like a little knitted thing, typically. Oh right. Um, it's just like giving your kettle a little jumper, basically. Oh, that's kind of cute. It is. Um, 
I guess so. Yeah, no, that's all right. Um, I don't know. It's 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 a decorative thing. Mm. Um, I have no problem with that, but um, I don't know. I wouldn't typically do it, and I haven't typically seen it around. But I think for someone that wants to do it, I think go ahead. I mm. think that's kind of a nice kind of decorative thing. Some people are more decorative than others. But I like it. It's cool. It's uh, quite nice. It really depends on what kind of tea cozy it typically would be. Mm. Well, recently uh, my sister got us a Michael D. Higgins tea cozy. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> it's very cute. That's that's fantastic. I don't know. Um, I love a tea cozy somewhere, just mm. as long as there's not a swastika on it. Because that would be a yeah. bit mad. I'm. I mean, I'm sure you could find that somewhere pretty easily. Yes, but yeah, I would. I would say. Uh no, I I would not personally want a swastika on my tea cozy. Mm, yeah, no, I I probably have. If I if I if I had if I got a tea cozy and then I went home and I put it on and then I realized there was a swastika, I would I would say my famous catchphrase, "Oh no, I got swastika again." <laughs> no. And that was a very good job. Yeah, no, I, um, I, I can't. I, I studied like I slept all night last night thinking of it uh, for eleven hours. Oh my god, I did not see that coming. Oh, yeah. oh okay. That's so unfair to you today, Jesus. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, so, um, another thing is tea in the media. Hmm. Okay. Tedia, if you... Tedia. For yeah. sure. Um, Jeremy Irons is a wonderful uh, British um, lad. Yeah. Um, he has Irish heritage, and he has a castle in Cork, apparently. Mm. Imagine just... I just want to, like... I just want to, like, point out for a second. Imagine just getting to say casually, oh, yeah, I own a castle. Yeah. It must feel very empowering. Yeah, it must, it must be. Um, but, yeah, no, he is... Um, He's a very excellent actor. He's been in, in quite a lot of uh, wonderful projects. Mm. One thing that stands out to me is that Mr. Irons was in a four-hour movie called Zack Snyder's Justice League. Mm. Um, he was present in this film, and he had the dialogue of, I'll put on the tea. Yeah. Now, what makes sense in my head is we never see them drinking tea, but I imagine there was a scene planned where all of them are around drinking tea that yeah. Mr. Irons, as Alfred, actually made them. Mm. Now, in my working brain, I feel like he made proper tea. I agree. In the sense of boiling it in the kettle, I feel like around the bat cave, there must have been the sound of shh as like echoed around. Um, you know, people are like, what's that? Is that like something sc scary? And it's just Alfred mm. boiling the kettle. And I feel like he got proper tea bags um, that he bought in the shop. And I just, I feel like he really made sense of it all and decided to give the heroes elegant cups of tea that helped them succeed in their mission. I agree, yeah. There is, of course, also that one scene of uh, Diana making tea and then Alfred's, like, uh, like giving her tips on, like, how to, like, put the leaves in. Like, wait, oh, I'm forgetting now. It's put the water in first, then the leaves. I just think, like, you know, it's very good um, world building for this tea. Tea building, you may yeah, say. Tea I think, building. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I respect a lot. I think more films need to uh, focus on the good tea building. Yes. No, there was, um, there was some uh, scene as well where uh, Barry uh, reverses time. Mm. Now, I think he was only able to do this was because he left, before he left the mansion, he decided that he wanted Barry's tea mm. and was able to drink Barry's tea. And Barry, drinking Barry's tea, was able to become a full Barry and be able to uh, bury themselves out of their situation. It was betting his iconic catchphrase, it's burying time. Of course. But yeah. 
Yeah. I do think, you know, it's called Barry's Tea. It's red like his suit. You know, it's mm-hmm. match made in heaven. Match made in heaven, really. Yes. Now, another thing I want to talk about is the movie. Have you ever seen The Princess Diaries with Anne Hathaway? I believe I have, but not in a while. Yes. I've watched it for the first time recently because I've never seen it before. And it's one movie I just hadn't got around to seeing. To be honest, it's quite extraordinary. I really enjoy it. Um, One scene that stood out to me was a scene with icon Julie Andrews where she's kind of in this kind of royal place with Anne Hathaway's character who's the granddaughter Mm -hmm. and that she, the grandmother and like people working around the mansion decide to have tea in the garden. Now, I have no idea what kind of tea they are drinking because it looks quite odd. But I'd imagine that off screen they added in milk or added in something or made it properly. And I'm guessing since she is the Lord and kind of famous around, I feel like she made the tea properly just because she has... Uh, certain accents around her now if it, if it was an American queen I'd feel like she would drink absolute shoddy shoddy shite red wine or some shite like that and probably give apple juice to the granddaughter but this elegant English woman decided to give her granddaughter tea now, I think that Anne Hathaway's character succeeded in the end of the film is because she drank tea when she would call to her grandmother when she became that princess. And now, she didn't want to do it, but I feel like it wasn't necessarily in, uh, like, you know, like a drug or something like that with the tea. But I feel like it was kind of a sense of confidence, a sense of elegancy, mm. a sense of happiness and togetherness that gave her the mighty rat of strength to be able to become the true princess and to be able to become such a courageous, mighty person. And yeah, no, I feel like tea in the media, especially in this film, it's not, it's not, not really explored that much, but I feel like it's it's there. What, what are your thoughts on uh, this yeah I think that's a very uh, I think that's very nice tea building you've made up for yourself there I do agree like this is why we need this is why like we need uh, more tea building in the media because like we're seeing cases like this where we're gonna have to like make our own head cannons but like again there are people out there like they really want to know the inner workings of the tea so I think you know they should like they should like for, like film college and stuff they should like give courses like on tea building yes Even in the iconic film Coraline, Mm. uh, two British women, I believe it's uh, from that uh, Jennifer Saunders and Don French, I think. Yeah, that's right. It's um, those women gave Coraline tea and it was able to warn her about the events of things to come. Mm. Right. Do you remember that? I do remember that, The yeah. hand in the cup with the tea leaves. Yeah, and it's like, and they think it's a giraffe. On the other side. Hand. You know, it's all very, again, like Coraline just stays being, uh, as as the hip and youths these days mm-hmm. in the streets say, uh, goated. Yes. Now, stays goated. Now, when you think of it, Coraline is American. Mm. And when she drank uh, tea from British people, She was able to gain the confidence to be able to take on uh, what was in her way. Yeah. For once, it's the uh, it's the it's the English exporting their culture onto others for good. Yes. The English and the Irish really help. Um, That's why um, together we can be strongest. Yeah. And we aren't against you, Americans. All we want to do I'm not trying to rob you. 
No, we I'm ju- trying to help you. We just we just want you to get kettles for your own good. Yes, get kettles, please, please, please get kettles. Now, one thing, the next thing I want to talk about, and it's cross country divisions with tea making. Whoa. Now, you know, with cross couples, you know, there's um, British people getting with Americans or Irish people getting with Americans. Mm. Uh, best combination, Irish with British, which is nice. But, um, or, you know, Australia or Mitchell's, St- you know, just all these cross country people uh, from far away from a different country, just opening up the heart and, you know, yeah, all that. Very beautiful. Yes. But one thing that stands out to me is what kind of tea do you end up making? Does the British or Irish person suffer with the American way? Or do the British stand up and like, no, like, no, American, you're a straight up joke. Or uh, the Irish, I'm not drinking that fucking thing. Go away with that, no lads. You fucking American woman trying to give me that fucking tea. Jesus Christ almighty, I wouldn't put the fucking thing in the cab. Where's your fucking kettle? Why would you put it in the microwave for fuck's sake, bye? Golly, golly gee, you are Oh my god. It's, it's just microwave tea. Fuck you. And, and yeah, rightfully so, I definitely think... Um, Personally, like, if I got married to an American and I saw them making microwave tea for our child, um, well, simply put, I do not have a spouse anymore. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the right way. That's the right way to do it. Yeah. Right way to do it. So, um, what I think about when I think of cross-country couples are the lovely and loveling Emily Blunt and John Krasinski. Mm. Now, John John Krasinski and Emily Blunt have appeared in a feature film together called A Quiet Place, where they have children. They are married in real life and actually have children. Now, I don't know in the world of the film if they can actually make tea, because Mm. apparently the monsters are attracted to noises, and if someone put on the kettle, it goes... And the microwaves goes, mm. so they probably get mortified and possibly eaten. Yeah. But, but in reality, mm-hmm. see what I did there? Terrific. Yes. With Emily and John, do you think that Emily is strong enough and wise enough to say to John, like, no! Like, no! John, you're a straight-up joke! And make John have a kettle in the house. I think she is very much so, yes. I think so. I think so. And I think I think John's, like, probably smart enough to the point where he'd actually listen. I hope he is anyway. Yeah. Or maybe they had a tea competition oh. and are like, okay, I'm gonna put this in the microwave. And then Emily was like, I'm going to put it in the kettle. Yeah. Yeah. Emily puts it in the kettle and brings it down. And like, John is like, I don't even know the difference. And then like, Emily's like, how do you not know? I don't know. I, 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 I'm pretty sure. Um, but they do have children. Now, I don't know if they have actually given tea to their children, do you think? Um, come on, John. Come I, I, on, John. I, I, I'd say, I'd say, yeah, I'd say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you think that maybe they both enjoyed the the one from the kettle? Oh, I would say so. Yeah, yeah, especially yeah. like yeah, <laughs> Woo! especially because like you know since they young. And this is probably like one of the first cups of tea they've had, if not the first. Like you know, yeah. they haven't had time to like yeah. have the microwave stuff like really like taint their brains. Yes, you know? yes, yeah, and um, yes, no, I definitely think 
uh, cross country couples are loving and lovely, mm. but uh, I believe um, British people shouldn't be prone uh, to living in a society uh, kettle less. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, you know, it's it's like living in a society. It's like it's something like we all do, and I think you know it'd become just a little bit less painful if it was kettleful and not kettleless. Yes. Um, yeah. No, I, you put the tea bag in the cup, mm. and to fully get that taste, you have to like the misery with it all. Maybe I like the good old misery. Maybe. As Mrs. As Mrs. Doyle says. As Mrs. Doyle says. So, um, any more thoughts... Um, or any more kind of things you want to discuss John Krasinski slash Emily Blunt if you're watching this please guest please f- please uh, agree to become special guests so next time we can investigate your tea habits yeah we'll investigate your tea habits and mm. we will promote A Quiet Place 3 exactly um, we'll, we'll film a, um, we'll film scenes um, in our backyard and yeah and uh I you know, mean, I mean, now you've, I know you've got like all the, I know you've got like a multi-million studio behind you, but I'm, mean, I'm sure you, I'm, sh- yeah. I'm sure you'll value it, it our is, contributions. No, it's a short film called A Loud Place, oh, and nice. it's, it's all about, um, me and you kind of giving out, and yes. other things kind of, you know, being loud, and then suddenly at the very end it's all silent. Hmm. They, they laughed inside. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it's um. Really, I think uh, we should. They should find a way to make tea in a quiet place tree, though. Just to yeah. have a. I think it would really empower, especially Emily Blunt. Exactly. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. I agree very much. Um, my one criticism, you know, with my again, my one criticism with both the films is their lack of tea building, especially because yeah. they go to such great lengths of like developing the world building. Um, yeah. with how people have to live, making as little noise as possible. Yes. And I think, you know, adding some, like, adding some good tea building in there, I think, would just elevate it to, like, the highest echelon mm-hmm. of cinema. Yes. And one thing I want to think about is um, uh, Tom Cruise appeared in a film with Emily Blunt called Edge of Tomorrow. Now, I haven't seen the movie. Have you? I have not, no. No. Um, but what really stands out to me is a long time ago, Tom Cruise was in this movie, and... Uh, he did an Irish accent, and uh, oh. and in people's opinions, Tom could not do an Irish accent. Now, Tom was recently on a show called The Late Late Show, hosted by the uh, greatest gent alive, Ryan Tuberty. Mm. Now, I think it was recently. Um, basically, he asked Tom, "How is your Irish accent these days, Tom?" And Tom was able to kind of do it a lot better. And now it's gotten a lot better. And I think the reason is, was because Tom um, was given tea by Emily Blunt. And she was like, this will change your life. And uh, Tom was able to suddenly do an Irish accent. I think that's a very compelling theory and one that I 100% believe. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I do. I do agree with them. Yeah, and uh, what are your thoughts? You know, originally it came from China, apparently. Um, and I, I think that uh, the Chinese are absolutely wonderful mm-hmm. uh, people. Uh, not the ones that. I not the government. From. No, not the government, but the the genuine kind of people yeah uh, i love mulan and i love kung fu panda and you know the you're you're fantastic and i love your dragon thing not really sure about you're the pig that kind of freaks me out but you know that's just me um ni hao um <laughs> <coughs> sorry i almost died um yeah no it's um thank you for giving us uh tea from your great uh, minds and uh, many other great things. And I just want to spread around the world to the Chinese people. Do ye have kettles? 
And that's what I want to ask. If there's any Chinese people, if you can please comment. If they if they do, can 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 you also please try to make sure that the Americans get it as well? Because I'm not 100% yeah. sure if our message is coming through. And yeah. we need all the help we can get, you know. we yeah. got to go on change.org, you know, because, you know, fun fact about change.org is like every... A uh, petition that gets signed always, always gets, always comes through. Oh yeah, yeah. Like there has never been an example where a petition's been signed and it hasn't come through. Fun, yeah. fun, true story, true story. Yeah, true. Yeah, no, it's that's a fantastic fact, Sean. Mm-hmm. So happy with that. Yep. Um, yeah, no, it's um a lot of uh, fantastic uh, people that drink prop uh, a lot of good tea. And it just, it really kind of embraces stuff. I think Robert Pattinson, in fact, drank uh, tea for a really, really long time. And uh, at the very end of his Twilight phase, he gave Kristen Stewart some tea. And she was able to act a lot better. But Yeah. Um, oh, come on! Like, I... No... I'm not okay. She's always been a good actress. Mm. It was just Twilight. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. she's always been good. Um, but but T made her better. Yes, yeah. It, no, it, it really did. You know, really show. And I, I think uh, Robert gave um, Matt Reeves tea. I think Colin Farrell gave Paul Dano tea. And I think Barry gave everyone else Barry's tea and was able to kind of spread around this sort of um, tea mania. And that's why the Batman was uh, well received. There was just there was just tea like in the air throughout the whole set. It was like it was like magic. Yeah. Um, I, per- I personally think uh, Zoe Kravitz drank a lot of tea uh, mm. with that cat milk and stuff like that and probably gave... Uh, the the cats. She 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 gave tea, tea to the cats. Uh, like when the yes. it, yeah yeah, and that's and that's how the cats are able to like give such a great performance in the film. Yes, no, it, it's it's legit and confirmed. Mm. Mm. Any other uh, final thoughts on this uh, mania? Um, it's manic, very manic, very very manic. Yes. Mm. Um. Yeah. Um. So I pose a question to you now. When you're having your tea, what do you think is the best uh, side treat thing to have with it? Oh yeah. No, I usually get a digestive biscuit. To be honest, it's it's very hard to be the digestives. Yeah, I think. Um, I like rich tea, but honestly, oh, yeah. yeah. I like I like rich tea biscuits. I mean, yeah. obviously, it has tea in the name. You think yeah. that's obvious? Yeah. But I don't know. Something about the digestives, I just like always keep yeah. coming back to those. No, I, I, I like both. Um, yeah, I do too. Yeah, I sometimes, occasionally, ginger nuts are okay. They're okay, they're fine. Hmm. Um, I don't know, there, there's the three that I kind of mostly go for. Yeah. Um, With some other stuff, not necessarily for me. Like, you know, there's obviously like fig rolls and hmm. other stuff, but, um, you know... Um, do you dunk, um, biscuits and tea? Well, I used to quite a lot, but, um, I don't really do that anymore, and I'm not sure why. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know, it's like, it's it's nice, still, pretty much, mm. like, yeah, it doesn't really take away from the flavor most of the time, yeah. it's... No, I always do it, mm. fun fact, I used to dump them into the thing, and make sure they were dug in. And then you're just like you're just like you're just like grabbing just like like a whole fist in the cup. Yeah, I used to do that, and then I used to get a spoon and then eat it like it was Weetabix. Whoa! It's um, it's kind of bad, but you know, I'm sorry. It's very experimental. It's very experimental, but it was nice because I still got the taste, and uh, yeah, that's just the way it was. This is the way. This is the way. Um. Yeah. No. It's. Pedro Pascal definitely drinks tea. Oh, one hundred percent. Yes. You just like you just look at his face. He has the face of a man that drinks tea. Yes. Oscar Isaac definitely. Oh, hundred percent. Natalie Portman. Absolutely. Yes. Um, Ryan Reynolds doesn't though. Eh, no. His I, wife Blake does, but not him. I hope I hope she at least becomes good influence on him and get convinces him to uh, first and foremost get a kettle. But uh, yeah. 
Second no, ball no, here. she has like a full place for tea bags. I'd imagine. Oh, that shout out to her. She's great. Yeah. Respect for her just like went through the roof right now. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, we could go on naming people. Why does it sound like we're on stage? <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we're not. Yeah, I don't know. It's so weird. I just sound so kind of. I don't know. It's weird. Anyway, yeah, no, it's um. What I will say, what applies to you? What uh, way do you drink tea? And what other people do you think drink tea? Leave all of your statements of all the stuff we have said in the comments. And I hope you've all had fun with this podcast. Don't forget um, to smash the like button and subscribe and hit the bell. Yeah. Any no final for- thoughts, Sean? Um, any final thoughts? Yeah. Before we wrap up. Well, I, 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 I just, I think we can all agree uh, at the end of this, the tea has enriched our lives in a significant yeah. way. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And I do think um, it is terrific, uh, beautiful, yeah. and yeah. there, there is no, there is no need to, to tea is us about mm. it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And that's the message I leave with our lovely audience tonight. Yes. I'm going to do this in uh, Robert Pattinson's uh, Batman voice. Uh, yeah. So um, what you have to do is um, you grab the tea and you drink it. Okay. I am vengeance and the vengeance of night. And you have to grab tea. Grab it. Grab it and drink it. That was terrible. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this podcast and I hope you drink tea and have it, uh, have a kettle as your property. Yes. Yeah, drinking proper tea on your property. Yes. Drink tea, 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 tea. Really good for me, 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 me. Tea, 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 tea. Makes me want to pee, 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 pee. In the toilet bowl. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. I love it a lot. Yeah. Okay, guys. One more time. All right. The Funky Podcast. The Funky Podcast. I hope you enjoy this Funky Podcast. The Funky Podcast. The Funky Podcast. The Funky Podcast. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. The Funky Podcast. Yeah. Listen to the Funky Podcast on the radio, on the stereo, or your headphones, or your earphones, yeah. Drinking a cup of tea, listening to the funky podcast. Listen to the funky podcast, yeah. 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 The funky podcast. Goodbye. I think that was absolutely fantastic. <laughs>